Hallelujah. From the east to the west to the north and the south. It's not a rap song, but let it come out of your mouth. Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, man, that sounded kind of good. From the east to the west to the north and the south, it's not a rap song, but let it come out of your mouth. <laughs> you know, you realize that God spoke uh, to the east, to the west, to the north and the south, to the length, the breadth, the depth, and the height when he spoke creation into existence. Amen. Hallelujah. And so what we should do is speak his word out of our mouths and speak into creation the manifested will of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the Ark of Peru on Friday evening. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so glad uh, you came to be with us. Welcome to all of you watching on live stream. Every week, we thank you for the faithful. Those who are in the congregation, we, we thank you, we love you, and we love you all out there as well. Uh, didn't we have a good weekend last weekend? I know that um, we don't measure God by when we had a good time, but we had a good time. It's always a good time in the presence of the Lord, and any time He downloads His Word, any time He uh, shows his spirit openly and the works that he does and we can know his ways. That's always a good time. And uh, we are coming to relieve the weary and the oppressed. The Lord is here on Friday evening. We're, we're getting ready to enter into the, the physical Sabbath time of, of remembrance. And he is here to relieve the heavy burden. Some of you, because I, I know, I know because I felt it too. You've been so tired from work this week. You said, Lord, I don't know how I'm really going to get up. I, I need a weekend. I need a rest. I need a respite. And the Lord says, I'm here to relieve you from your oppression. I'm here to rebuke the suppression you know, some of you have heard of suppressive fire. You suppress your enemy's uh, willingness or ability to fight with high volumes of lead, right? <laughs> Ain't that right? Suppressive fire. Well, some of us have been under some suppressive fire, and the enemy of your soul has tried to weary you. He's tried to get your thoughts off in, in left field and in right field, and Take your eye off the ball. Well, God says, I've come to relieve that. Why don't you surrender it to me? And so if that's you, this is for you. Amen. And we welcome every uh, single one of you uh, to our live stream broadcast. One of these days, we'll have our own television studio, I assume. We've got to write down and write the vision and make it plain. We already come uh, on the camera and on the computer, so why not? Why couldn't we have a broadcast we pay for, we operate, and we get the gospel to the masses around the world? I guarantee you the wickedness of this world, they're getting a message from the powers that be. All you have to do is turn on your... Uh, Mainstream big four media networks, I think, a lot like uh, Fox, MSNBC, um, I don't know, C-SPAN, CNN. There's so many of them, and they're all uh, run by the same people who run in the same cliques and worship the same God, really. But you know what? We've got a message, too. We have a message that beats out Fox, it beats out CNN, it beats out any other network, because ours is a lasting message, the message of a kingdom. All that they can produce is based out of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What we produce doesn't produce from ourselves. It's, it's because of our connection to the vine. He is the vine. We are the branches. We bear fruit being connected to him and the kingdom is birthed out of us. We have a message. Amen. And we're getting ready to have a booth at the circus 
City Festival. I believe it's next week. I'm pretty certain it's next week. Sunday we'll be setting up for that. And that's just another opportunity to get our church out there. But we're not just getting our church out there. We want to represent Christ Jesus. We want to reach out to the weary, the oppressed, the heavy laden, the burdened, the depressed, the sick. We want to say, can we pray for you? We want to say, no, God loves you. And uh, let God manifest in that time. So if you're a part of this church, we want you to be a part of that. And then you can look for times to sign up for. Thank you for everyone who has taken uh, that time already and, and wrote down your commitment in the schedule. My wife and I and our daughter and our son are going to be out there. Um, and we'll be uh, just reaching out to people and just trying to just get our message out there. Amen. You are a living epistle, read and known of all men. You could be the catalyst that changes a life because of your time out of tent. Lots of lives were changed in a tent. And that's a whole other Bible study, but uh, it's a symbolic representation. God will be there, will be there, will you. Amen. All right, if you could please bring up the giving links. I'm going to try to uh, get through this. We have different ways to give on our website, www.revivalcenterperu.com. One word. And um, we have a cash app option, and we have a PayPal option. So those are two ways to give. Money sign Arc Peru, that's our cash app, and then our PayPal is paypal.com slash paypal me. I never use PayPal hardly at all. And then uh, ARC Peru, um, if you write a check, if you send a check in the mail, if you put a check in, in, in an envelope, uh, make sure it is written out to the Arc or the Revival Center and indicated. Uh, its destination in the uh, memo box. So, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Almighty God, maker of heaven and earth and all that is, the revelation of all things, we just ask that every gift and every sacrifice does not go unnoticed. And that, Lord, you will abundantly bless and favor your people. And give us a heart that will give, not to receive, but to be givers. In Jesus Christ's name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Some of you need to be like Isaac and redig some old wells. You stopped your, your wells have been stopped up. The enemy has hampered you. The enemy has uh, soiled tried to spoil the work that you've been doing, but you need to redig those old wells that your fathers have uh, uh, dug, and God will give you water. God will give you uh, the resources you need and room to operate in Jesus' name. That's for somebody. You need to not stop your wells of giving just because of circumstances, or, and if you're thinking that right now, you've already been influenced by the wrong spirit. Not circumstances do not outweigh or do away with principle. The principles of the Word of God. God loves a cheerful giver. Don't stop doing what you know is right to do in the middle of circumstances. This may be a testing time, but God has your back, and He has your front, and He has your side, and your other side, and He's over you. And he's the rock that you stand on. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we're certainly glad to be here this evening. And I feel like I have a word. And it's, uh, there's a lot here. And I more than likely will not get away, uh, get all the way through this word. But I think it will help someone. There's a lot of tired saints. You know, God didn't tell you you couldn't be tired. He said, don't be weary. 
through the Apostle Paul. Don't be weary in well-doing, for in due season you will reap if you faint not. And there's a lot of pressure from the outside. So I want to help our faith here this evening in Jesus' name. If you could bring up my first uh, passage of Scripture, we're going to look at 1 Timothy 3 and 16. Very familiar. I love this because this is the whole gospel. You want to know the gospel? We'll read it together. Great is the mystery of godliness. This is without controversy. You know what, you know what it means to be without controversy? There's no question about it. There's no, is this true? Maybe something else is true. It's without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. That's right. Almighty God manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, believed on in the world, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and then received up into glory in that order. Now, if you will jump over to uh, the book of First Peter, chapter 1, we're going to look at the 6th through the ninth verse. I'm going to help you tonight. I'm probably going to help you tomorrow, too, because I won't get through all of this. Even as verse 6, start with verse 6. Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, that you are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than that of gold, perishes, though it be tried in the fire, might be found unto great praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ." Verse 8, let me look at this. I wrote, I know I, I wrote this down. I don't think that's the right one, but I'm going to, um, going to see here. Yes, it is. All right, verse 8, whom having not seen you love... In whom, though now you see him not, yet believing you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Pay attention to verse 9. Thank you. You are doing right and wonderful, and I appreciate it. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. And I want to minister on this subject, teach a little bit, preach a little bit. Receiving the mystery of our faith, receiving the mystery of our faith. In this passage of Scripture in 1 Peter 1 and 9, it says, after all of these temptations, we receive the end of our faith. But we don't get to the end of our faith without having the beginning of our faith, who Jesus, remember, is the author and the finisher of our faith. And from the beginning to the end, we have to know the mystery of our faith. Now, Father, Yahweh, Jehovah God, we come before you asking that you will speak as only you can speak through this messenger. Lord, anoint my lips of clay, make my tongue the pen of a ready writer, and help the people to understand. Make it so that they receive this word gladly and understand it, and see their life and your life in them in this word. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be my helper, Lord. Amen. Amen. Receiving the mystery of our faith. The book of Hebrews says that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. So from the beginning to the end... The Lord Jesus controls every step of faith, or rather, He has provision and wisdom 
in providing the step for you and I to take of faith throughout uh, our lives, from the beginning to the end, from the end to the beginning. He has all of the steps covered. But this is receiving the mystery of our faith. Now, what does this have to do uh, with our Scripture passages? The Scripture tells us in 1 Timothy 3 and 16, there the mystery of godliness. God was manifest. Now, if we look up this word mystery in the Greek in uh, 1 Timothy 3 and 16, it is the word mysterion, or the hidden thing, the mystery of godliness, the hidden thing of godliness is this, that God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seed of angels, believed on the world, preached unto Gentiles, and received up into glory. In 1 Peter 1, uh, we talked about the end of our faith, which is the salvation of our souls. So you can be rest assured, and I can be rest assured, through faith. Notice this is through faith. You have to have faith. It seems like such a simple subject, but it's one that we uh, often struggle with. Those who are going through, uh, you at one point will struggle with your faith. It's not saying you're a terrible person. It's not saying that you have completely backslid. You will struggle through your faith, but it is how you handle the struggle in your faith as to whether or not your faith will grow, and then you will come out on the other side a stronger person, a stronger, stronger in spirit, more assured in your soul, and uh, your life submitted to His Spirit, your soul submitted to His Spirit, and you walking in or victoriously. So there's an end, and that, so there has to be a beginning. If there's an end, there always has to be a beginning. You know, God has no end or beginning, so we can't put him into that category. There's an, but the, there's an end of our faith, the salvation of our souls, which is the original, original purpose and plan of God to bring us back to that state of perfection that we often speak about and we look forward to, which the seventh day points to that time when we are reunited with God, and the scripture tells us we will receive a change, our spirit, soul, and body will be one with the Lord again, and we'll have a glorified body. That's the end of our faith. That's the culmination of the saving or the salvation of our souls. But Jesus, being the author of our faith, then puts a starting point of our journey. Now, how we get to having faith and more faith and faith upon faith, there's not just one level of basic faith. Faith grows as you grow. You grow from faith to faith. Romans 1 and 17 says the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. If you become the righteousness of God revealed in the earth like Jesus was and is, then you reveal the righteousness of God as you grow and mature in your faith. Hebrews, the 11th chapter, tells us without faith it is impossible to please God. You cannot please God. You and I cannot come to God or God can uh, draw us, but we won't see it. If you uh, read my Facebook pastoral insight post, even if God drew you if without faith, you wouldn't even know what you were looking at. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them to diligently seek him. The first step of when you come to God in having faith is believing that he is. That's the simple part of the mystery. You just have to believe that God is. You don't have to worry about who he was or who he's going to be. If you just believe he is, he is when he was, he is now and he is... the. He is in the future. 
If you believe he is, you know that he was, he will be, and he is now. He's the I am. I am past, present, future, eternity. I just am. It's that simple. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. And when you come to him, you have to first believe that he is. That is so simple. But we know we're on a journey because the faith that you have now isn't, and I, I know this is repeat, but you need to hear this. The faith that you have now is not the faith that you're going to have tomorrow. And it's not the faith you're going to have a week from now. If you're growing in Christ Jesus, your faith now will not be like your faith 20 years from now. Along with it, you'll receive wisdom, knowledge, understanding, revelation, knowing how to walk out the faith that Jesus has given you and I. Then why is it that so many of us struggle with it when the smallest problems arise? You have a God who hung the earth on nothing. Who created the waters in the palm of his hand. Measured them out. Made you in your mother's womb. Created a supercomputer, furnace, extraordinary creation called your body. That would not work the way it is supposed to work if one thing is missing. Now, you may be able to live without an arm, but your quality of life will be diminished, and that's not how God created you. You won't be 100%. God created you 100%. And so if God can do all of that, and God can speak worlds into existence. And God can part red seas by the elements. And God can make water come out of a rock. And God can raise dead people back to life. And God can reveal himself in his glory to a mere human being. God can do anything. So why would we question and have trouble with our faith? The word... Faith in this passage of Hebrews chapter 11 is the Greek word P-I-S-T-I-S, -I pistis. It simply means or denotes a conviction of truth. So essentially what I'm saying is that your faith is a conviction in truth. Fight so hard for the world to uh, receive faith without the guidance and, and the inspiration of God. Notice you can't have faith without God. God's the one who gave you faith. He uh, created it as an attribute of himself because he's truth. That's why the world can't receive it. That's why they're always attacking your faith. Because they don't have the spirit that will convince them or convict them of the truth. Unless it's revealed by God. And that's why the angels in heaven rejoice over one sinner that repents. One sinner that sees God. God draws them near to himself. For the goodness of God leads us to repentance. And the angels of heaven rejoice because of faith. A conviction of truth. And when you be able to and you begin to see truth, it's hard to miss. When you are able to see truth, it is then hard to miss. And of course, a decision has to be made. So we have a beginning and an end of our faith. Notice this. Faith is something necessary for this life. 1 Corinthians 13 and 13, Now abides faith and hope and charity, but the greatest of these is charity. I would say that faith is the vehicle 
and a down payment to give you access to a greater sum of a balance that is yet to be fully paid. Where it's, he's paid for, but you, you have access to a, a portion. And faith is like your debit card. You put your debit card in, you type in God's 7777 pin number, and you get a perfect balance. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you put your faith debit card in, I'll say that again. You type in God's 7777 debit, uh, ba- uh, pin number, and you get the perfect balance. God gives you what you need at that time. The pin number doesn't change. What you need at that time, you receive. It's a portion. So it's necessary. And faith is actually a deep subject. It's necessary for you to get along in this life and to get to the destinations that God has for you. And some of you and me included, we have destinations that are not the end of our faith, but are on the journey of our faith. And we get there by and through faith. Without faith, it's impossible. Not only to please God, but to see where God's leading you. To see what God's leading you into. To hear His voice. To know Him. Now I wrote down. One, two, three, four mysteries. Five. Five mysteries the Scripture uh, gives us. Now you're going to hear the mystery of your faith. 1 Timothy 3 and 16 talks of the mystery of godliness. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 through 8, tell us of the mystery of iniquity. 1 Peter 6, 1 and 6 through 9, the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls, which is where my text comes from, the mystery of our faith. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 7, we have the mystery of the wisdom of God that Paul preached. Matthew 13 and 11, we have the mystery of the kingdom of heaven. Now, to understand things like the mystery of iniquity that already works and the end of your faith and the mystery of the wisdom of God or the mysteries of the kingdom of God, you first had to have a manifestation of the mystery of godliness. The mystery of godliness makes you able to receive the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, the mysteries of wisdom, to know and understand the mystery of iniquity. All of this is made possible, including the mystery of your faith, our faith, by the mystery of godliness. God, the mystery of God manifest in the flesh, being justified in the Spirit. Preached, seen of angels, preached to the world, believed on in the world, received up into glory, makes the mystery of your faith possible. You know, it's so hard to understand faith if you don't understand God. How can you have faith in a God you don't understand? You say, well, it's just blind faith. That's why God doesn't leave you at that place of misunderstanding or not understanding or not having revelation. But you and I are to grow and have the righteousness of God revealed in our lives from faith to faith. So in order to receive the end of your faith, you have to first understand and get through the mystery of godliness. Mystery of godliness makes it all possible. God was manifest in the flesh so that you could manifest God in your flesh. God was justified by the Spirit. You're justified by His blood through faith. God was seen of angels. 
And God gave angels to be ministering spirits sent forth to minister on behalf of those who would become the heirs of salvation. That's you and I. You have access to the heavenly host. God was preached to the nations. And so God would use your mouthpiece. God would make you a living epistle, read and known of all men, so that the nations would see the light and the word of God in you. And God knew that they would believe on Him. And then He prayed, Jesus prayed, I believe it's around John chapter 15 or 17. He said, I'm praying for those who are going to come because of the word that is believed on through those that I'm leaving here. And then God's giving you access to a resurrection because of the mystery of godliness. See, you wouldn't understand the mystery of iniquity. You wouldn't understand the, you wouldn't have the end of your faith. And you wouldn't understand the mysteries of the kingdom or the mysteries of God's wisdom without the mystery of godliness being revealed. That's why the righteousness of God, as we've mentioned, is revealed from faith to faith. Amen. James chapter 1, verses 5 and also verse 17 tells us, I'm just going to go there. I'm just going to read it because sometimes I don't understand my own writing. That's terrible. I'm a left handed writer. And, uh, yeah, it, uh, it's, uh, it's something to, it's a mystery, that's for sure. <laughs> James chapter 1 and 5, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and upbraids not, it shall be given him. Verse 17, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness. Neither shadow of turning. Every good gift and every perfect gift, including faith, one of the big three in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, is given by God. You weren't born with it. It has to be downloaded and planted into you by God. And it starts as a little seed. You see, where some Christians get hung up, they, they understand God is the author of my faith. He's the finisher of my faith. But they don't understand the mystery in the middle. And the mystery in the middle is where the righteousness of God then becomes revealed as you walk and you grow. Walk by faith, not by sight. If you are walking by your five senses... You're walking in your flesh. If we are ever to get victory over ourselves, okay, Jesus has already given us the victory over the enemy. Your biggest enemy is you. I'm not telling you to hate yourself. I'm saying your biggest enemy is your soul. A soul that is not submitted to the Spirit of God. A heart that's desperately wicked and above all evil. That only God can tame. You know why you talk nasty? Because your heart's nasty. Because there's something in you that's still a little bit nasty and it hasn't been healed and only God can tame that. And when you submit that to Him, you'll find a release and a liberty in your life that you have never to this point received or walked in. You know why your thoughts are? It's your heart. The worst advice. Now I keep saying this. The worst advice you could receive or even follow is just follow your heart. Just follow your heart. It's not what my word says. 
That's not what the Bible says. My heart is deceitful, and when left to its own devices, will destroy itself. Because I was full of corruption, and I was in need of a Savior. That's why He's the Savior. And so I don't make insurmountable mistakes. He has to be my Lord, too. <laughs> a lot of folks accept the Savior, but they, they shy away from the Lord. And so they're saved, but they keep going around the same mountain, proverbially. They keep walking in the same ruts, proverbially. They keep making these bad decisions, proverbially. Uh, all the time, because he's their Savior, not their Lord. He has to be both. You have faith enough for him to save you, but do you have faith enough for him to sit on the throne of your life and direct your ways and direct the kingdom that you are, are building? You know, the kingdom of God is within you, and unless God builds that, your labor is in vain. Your bricks are going to fall down. Your little steeple that you think is so cute is going to fall down. Your little furniture is going to rot away. Unless God builds your and mine house, we labor in vain. And we are only able to allow God to build our house from faith to faith and reveal His righteousness. What you see in a house is a manifestation of the heart of the inhabitants. Well, I just made a bad choice. You made a bad choice, but there's something that's causing that, and you need to get it out of your heart. And that takes faith. A conviction of truth. That's why the writer said, whatever is not of faith is Sin. You know, God hates unbelief as much as He hates any abomination that we could uh, go through and mention. Because unbelief will rewrite the Bible, rewrite the story of your life, speak declarations over your life that God didn't declare over you, and try to reorder creation. In your own image. You've got to understand, God paid attention to the minute details from the beginning, wrote the story, put every brick in place, put every element in place. You can't change the story, but the story is only revealed through faith. That's why it's impossible to please Him. And when you are uh, living in unbelief and doing the actions and the works of unbelief, you're saying that He is isn't enough. Well, He is now, but I don't see Him in the future, so I'm going to try to interject my will. That's unbelief. You're trying to rewrite and redo what God has already set in order. Because you don't understand what I'm talking about, the mystery of your faith. And in order to understand the mystery of your faith, you're going to have to receive it from the source of faith. We want to know, we, all these books are written about uh, the Antichrist. We want to know who the Antichrist is. You know, I don't care who the Antichrist is. Thank God for supernatural wisdom, but thank God I know the Christ! The living Christ, the only begotten Son of God. And that's a tell, tell, tell sign that you don't understand the mystery of faith because you want to know who some man of sin is before you want to know who the man is. The man Christ Jesus. We're so, we, we are so, it's really fear. 
Well, I'm just trying to educate the masses. Yeah, we have to know what's coming and, and what is going on. We need to have wisdom. We need to have revelation. But you get that from one source, and you don't get it from uh, going through genealogical records, though there may be you know, good information in there. You want to understand spiritual things? you got to go to the man himself through faith. And God will download the mystery. God downloads the mystery as your faith is able to receive it and then to walk in it. You're not only supposed to, and I'm not only supposed to have it downloaded into us, but then we're supposed to be able to walk in it and manifest it. Manifesting this mystery of godliness and receiving the mystery of our faith. To get to the end of our faith, the salvation of our souls. The culmination of your history. Any action done out of unbelief not only quenches your faith, but it corrupts your ability to keep faith. When you receive it. Do you understand? We have to keep the faith. We always talk about fighting the good fight. And I believe in fighting the good fight. But some of us got to learn to keep the faith. And you're not going to be able to keep the faith. Unless you know the mystery. And remember it's all accomplished through the mystery of godliness. Your life is to be a pattern of Christ's life. When we act outside of faith is when we lack now faith. When we act not in faith and we act out of flesh and fear. No flesh and fear become co-joined and you act out of flesh and fear, and it doesn't express faith. It expresses uh, broken, corrupt, imperfect things. But Hebrews chapter 11 tells us, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now is right now. Now is later. And now is before, there's always a now in every state and time you find yourself in. It's right now. So what is important at this moment? I need to have some now faith. If I don't have the now faith, I'm not going to understand the mystery. And then I'm going to act out of flesh and fear. And when people act out of flesh and fear, well, you know the mess that's created. You will make a mess of your life, living by your flesh, out of the desires of your flesh, and then reacting out of fear. When you are living in fear, that simply means, let's look at this. When you are living out of fear, you have let something else control what you think is your destiny and your present. Your present and your future. And so then you act to try to stave off or prevent this thing that you're afraid of from affecting your now and your later. And you make dumb decisions, say stupid things, S-T-U-P-I-D, all in caps. You ever notice when we say stupid things, we say some real stupid things. Well, that was just, that was your fear and your flesh. Because somehow you didn't have some now faith. Or didn't go to the source for your now faith. And so now you got now fear and now flesh. And you're sowing seeds and you're planting and building into your future the wrong things that are just going to corrupt. Corrupt your thinking. Uh, corrupt all that concerns you. 
the mystery of faith is working through you when your actions and not just your words manifest God's glory. We are to do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> that will bring some of our actions into account, right? <laughs> some of our thoughts. Imagine the change in us if we, if we said, all right, I'm going to do everything today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm going to do it in His honor, and I'm going to do it by faith, and we want to do this one thing, and it's like, oh, I don't think He'd be too pleased with that. Because you're, you're, you and I are supposed to do everything according and for His glory. Husbands, when you love your wife, you're loving them to the glory of God. Wives, when you, hus when you love your husbands and hopefully you reverence your husbands and you follow the Word of God, you're doing it for the glory of God. Children, you're doing it for the glory of God. When you come to church, you're doing it for the glory of God. When I preach a message or teach a message, I'm doing it for the glory of God. Whether I heal the sick and God uses me to heal the sick or whether he uses me to prophesy, give words of knowledge, give words of wisdom, I'm doing it to the glory of God and I'm pointing you back to the source of your faith. The author and the finisher. The Lord Jesus Christ. So we're walking out the mystery in our present time when he's working through us and our actions and not just our words only manifest his glory. And I think that we need to speak his word more often in our daily lives, wherever we go, whatever we do, and we'll see more glory. You ever notice that something seems to appear more when you talk about it? It's like the evils of racism. It's an evil. It's a spirit. It's a spirit with a, with a, with a title. It's fear. It's not the love of God. Have you noticed that people talk about it and then you see these little fires popping up all over the place and then... This person starts acting out, and this person starts acting out, and this person commits a racially motivated crime, and every, everybody's bickering and fighting, and every, one side's pitted against the other. They talked about it, and sowed the seed, it pressed it into your mind, and now you're acting because you, you're not in your now faith. You're saying dumb things, you're doing dumb things, and so many captives are used as pawns and slaves to do the devil's will. Because they lack that now faith and they don't, they don't understand the mystery. And so then when they see something that they, is, is out of their reach, sometimes they're just play, playing flat out wrong. They're standing for the wrong things. I don't care if it offends anyone. Some of the stuff you're standing in, you're standing for, it's corrupt. And it's wrong. And some of the things I've stood in before, I've been wrong. I didn't have now faith. So I made a decision based off of what I was hearing. Come on now. Romans 10 and 17 says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You want faith? Start hearing God and his word. Job, the wise old sage Job, said, I have esteemed your word more than my necessary food. David, the psalmist, or maybe it was Asaph, I, I don't exactly remember the writer of this psalm, but he said, the entrance of your word gives light, it gives understanding to the simple. Before I was in darkness, I was wandering around doing things out of my own heart. I didn't have now faith, but when your word came into me, then I knew what to do. My vision was clear. I could see the path ahead of me. That's now faith. That's for your present right now. 
And some of you Christians need to stand on your now faith and not your nationalistic faith or your politic faith or your party faith or your group faith or your educational faith. Stand on your now faith. God faith. Galatians 2 and 20. I live by the faith of the Son of God. I am crucified with Christ. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the faith that I now live by, I live by the faith of not mine, not yours, but the faith of the Son of God. That's my now faith. He's my present, He's my past, and He's my future. And as I walk along and I understand the mystery of godliness and it's revealed in my life, and then I understand the mystery and I receive the mystery of my faith, I can receive the end of my faith, the salvation of my souls, and the overcoming of myself, and all of this stuff that is beneath us as Christians. I'm not saying people are beneath you, all of the stuff, all this that you see now, your banking systems, your possessions, all of that's beneath the kingdom. Your food supply, it's all beneath the kingdom. Your hobbies, your, your, the things you're talented in that you do for fun and pleasure. I like to do things for fun and pleasure, but it's all beneath the kingdom of God. Faith is part of the down payment of the promise of God for you. Faith's first step gives you access to your inheritance in measure until that which is perfect is come. Because remember, now abides faith and hope, charity, but the greatest of these is charity. So when you receive the salvation of your souls and the end of your faith, then that which is perfect has come and your faith has brought you, you've understood the mystery, now you've come to the end and now that which is perfect has come and all is revealed in measure, in full measure, full manifestation, full measure. And Lord, I wish we could have some full manifestation in the Ark of Peru. So when you walk out the mystery of godliness while receiving the mystery of the faith, <laughs> you show it by your works. James chapter 1 and 6 and James chapter 2 and 13 through 18, faith without works is dead being alone. If you have faith, show it to me by your works. Don't just put up, why don't you show up? Don't say you love God and, and just refuse to acknowledge His presence. Acknowledge His Lordship, that He's your Savior, that He's your healer, that He's your deliverer, that He's your substance. You show your faith by your allegiance and loyalty to Him and your recognition. How do, how do people... Outside of your family, see that you have a wife or you have a husband. You not only said, you know, baby, I love you and I want to spend my life with you and I want to go and conquer worlds together and slay dragons and fly off to <laughs> and all those cute little books they write. You manifest it. By your commitment, by your loyalty, by your allegiance, and by your actions. But I do love you, but I don't show you. That's not real convincing. Show me your faith by your works. I'll show you my faith by my works. And those who show faith by their works are starting to, beginning to understand this mystery. It's going to get you to the salvation of your soul. 
And along the way, God will be manifest in your life and you'll follow in His footsteps as Jesus walked on the earth. Your revelation, your, your knowledge, your understanding of God will be greater, more full. He'll mean more to you because you'll know Him more. You'll know Him better. You'll understand His ways more. You won't hold it against Him when He withholds something uh, out of His wisdom that you thought you needed. How many times there's been things I've said, Lord, I really need this right now. Right, right now. Just right now. If I don't get this right now, Lord, I am going to literally die. I'm going to shrivel up, turn into dust, and go back to the earth. And then God doesn't answer your prayer. And you're, the next day you're sitting there, you're alive, you've got food on the table, you got clothes on your back, you're blessed. And he comes across from a thundering pulpit and he says, I love you. Ain't that enough? I provide for you. Isn't that enough? I know what's best. I know what you need. And now if you'd have some now faith, you'd see me in my present manifestation in your life and the things you don't understand, and you'll grow to the next faith, and then you'll see more clear, and it goes on and on until glory. Until glory, in Jesus' name. Amen. The mystery, receiving the mystery of our faith. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you tonight, if you are struggling and you're wondering, Lord, you're asking the question, Lord, you said I was to have faith. You said you would provide it. You said that. Uh, you would give me everything I need, but I'm struggling right now. If that's you, I just will speak a word of encouragement to you and just to tell you to have some now faith. Just a simple word, have some now faith. Let God give you now faith to understand where you're at now so you don't miss the mystery. If you miss the mystery, you won't have the knowledge or the revelation when you get to the next faith. Amen. Don't miss the mystery or your part will be unwritten out of history. You'll miss your greatest moments if you miss that mystery that God is revealing in your journey. Don't quit, church. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on your spouse. Don't give up on your kids. Don't start acting out of the flesh and fear and doing uh, things you think are right because, well, I've been taught that way or I've thought that way. It's got me this far. And I've had success. Well, you know what? What's gotten you this far is not part of the next journey when you cross over the river and the manna stops and God says, now you're going to eat of the fruit of the land. And you're a different people, a different person. What worked then might not always work now. Staying with the principles of God, but allowing God to give you the hidden wisdom, the hidden wisdom of God, the mystery of God's wisdom. Giving you insight and access to His solutions, His battle plan, His plan of victory. Amen. The way you thought, the way you acted back then is not suitable for now. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow morning. I love all of you. Shalom and good night.